Well, you said in one of your one of your raps, I'm probably not saying it exactly right, but you said that I'd rather take the chair than, than snitch. Nah, that was Polo G. Oh, that was Polo? Yeah, oh, my that bad. was Polo. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. Um, do you feel the same way? Um, exactly. <laughs> I ain't telling on nobody, but uh, if he a man, he'll take his charge. You know what I'm saying? He 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 gonna own up to it if he a man. Have you ever had anybody tell on you? Nah. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> nah, I think <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Actually, been set up. You were set up. Yeah. Well, I don't okay. want to go no farther than that, but yeah. Okay. Well, can I just ask, was it one of your friends that set you up? Not really a friend, just somebody I was dealing with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's the worst when, you know. It's a, Yeah, it's worse when they really close to you. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, Mo3. Uh, I interviewed him recently. He said how his best friend right. told on him. Have you had a situation where people snitched on you? Uh, my best friend. Your best friend snitched on you. Best friend. Can you talk about that situation? Yeah, it's, that's what I went to prison for. Oh, for the two years? Yeah. Over that robbery? Oh, well, it was four robberies, four. you said? I only had two, but I took his two. After I took his two, he still told on me. I already took your two. What did you tell for? Okay, wait, hold on. This sounds crazy. So you had four robberies. I had being, two. You had two robberies you'd be charged Then I came for. back and got indicted two more times. But I'm knowing because, that these not my. It's cool. I'm gonna okay. take my partner charge. I'm already in here. He not in here. I'm already in here. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's a it's an interesting type of thing because you you have this this violence that occurs in these neighborhoods, and nobody wants to tell. Right. So a lot of people are forced to to do you know. Do some time. <laughs> well, well, they, they they end up having to do street justice, right. you know, which kind of ends up becoming a revolving door of communities that are going to prison because they don't want to talk to police. Exactly. And they end up handling shit themselves. And, exactly. Yeah, man, it's sad. It's sad. It is, and, but um, like, it's a revolving cycle. Like, I feel like it'll never stop. Like, it's a hood in every city. Like, that's going to go on. Like, God just blessed some people not to be in the hood, and some people is, and some, but a lot of people make it out the hood. A lot of people don't. You know, like, you talk about how you look up to Nipsey. Right. And, and Nipsey started a store in his own hood. Right. Crenshaw Slauson is, is the hood. It's not, right. it's not a middle-class neighborhood. Right. I actually been to the store, and the hood is right behind it. Right there. Right there. Now, let's just say that you, you, keep, you keep growing and your money keeps increasing. You're now sitting on millions of dollars. Would you ever open up businesses in Mobile in your own neighborhood? I, I most definitely would open up business in Mobile. But okay. hanging out there every day, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'd probably swing by, but hanging out, nah, it ain't like you're, you're a sitting target. Yeah, and you know, most rappers don't open up businesses in their own right. neighborhoods. You well, know? I, I like, actually, but see, that's why I asked earlier, like, Le Dirt, Le Dirt, that's my partner. Like, I, I, I actually texted him, like, the other day, like, hey, bro, what you doing to make some extra money instead of rap? He, like, invest. He, like, a restaurant, like, he gonna open up some restaurants and shit like that and truck driving and shit. Yeah, you know, I interviewed him a while back. He, he was opening up a truck driving business yeah, in, uh, exactly I think, Atlanta, I think, or something like that. Like, I got my own trucking company, my um, own real estate company, like... Wait, 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 wait. This is actually interesting. You have your own trucking company. Yes. How many trucks? Oh, we got... We started off with... We started off with two. We got, like, like eight or nine. You got nine, what, the big rigs? Yes, 18 wheelers. Really? Yes. Yeah, man, you also have to invest your money. Like, you know, I, I do... I have a page called Vlad Stocks where I talk about stock investing. Right. And, uh, you know, because everyone always tells people like, well, you know, you got to buy a house, but that's not always the best investment. Right. Y you know what I mean? Right. And the thing about money is that it's a lot easier to get money than to keep money. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Because I, uh, I don't watch money go so quick. Like, right. Like this. I'm talking about I might, I might have 10 racks on me 
And by the next time I look down, I'm, I'm stacked by this big. Well, I mean, you got your teeth done. Right. Diamonds? Yeah, flawless. Okay. Like, right. how much did that cost? Uh, ask John and Dane. Because I don't want to tell you the price and they think I'm lying <laughs> on here. Tell them ask John and Dane. I, I'm going to record John and Dane let let him tell the price. Okay, I mean, I know, I, I definitely know who Johnny Dang is, and yeah. he, he definitely does great work. Right. You know, shout out to Paul Wall, too, his business partner. Right. Um, I mean, but you got your teeth done, and is it permanent? Yeah, they're permanent. Oh, so you actually went to a dentist. Yeah, I had, like, Johnny Dang showed, like, it's a dentist in Houston called, I think, okay. like, some with a B, some brownstone, some shit, but he um sent you to the dentist, they put him in, you out of there. Okay, and they have to shave your teeth down? Yeah, they yeah they had to shave some. Not all of them, but some of them did get shaved. How did it feel like when it was all done? Suddenly you have a whole mouth right. full of metal and right. diamonds. Right, it, it felt weird as hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? I kept biting down and shit, but like after a couple of weeks, I had got used to it. It was hard to hit, like hard to eat. Like it's still certain stuff I don't eat now, like chips. Like, uh, you don't really supposed to eat with metal spoons and metal forks and shit like that. Oh, because it clangs against yeah, the teeth. Yeah, Huh. And you don't supposed to smoke a lot. Because I went back, when I went back to um, San I just went to Hollywood. So Johnny boy asked me, like, you been smoking? <laughs> I'm like, nah. He like, yes, you have. Okay, he like, it, it'll fuck with the diamonds. Like, like, you can tell when somebody been smoking. Wait, so smoking weed will fuck up the diamonds in your teeth? Well, not fuck them up, but nah, just... Nah, but it'll have them looking probably like dull and shit. Huh. Yeah. Damn. Did you know that before you got them? Yeah, he told me. Okay. So yeah, you he told you. me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm a weed smoker. You a weed smoker? Right. They, like, they okay. permanent. I ain't got no choice. What, what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> I don't, what you want me to eat a weed brownie? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you just dropped... You know your project, right? Um, what do you got coming up next? Um, really just shoot some more videos to the project. Like it, I had a lot of big features already that I didn't even put on the tape. You get what I'm saying? Like I just say that shit for later. I be wanting to see what type of numbers I really can do by myself. Even though I did have Peasy, Rallo, and you know what I'm saying, I just still be wanting to see what type of numbers I can do by myself. I work with a lot of big artists that are, that ain't even on the tape. Can you say who they are? Um, Dirt. I got some shit with Yachty on the way. Mm. And, um, it's plenty I can't even name. Like I, I can't even thank everybody, but it's a lot though. I've been working. I'm yeah, Mize, man. I mean, I got some nigga Mize on the way. Mm. Yeah, a lot of shit. Well, no, man. I think people cowboy. My brother cowboy, I got like we down, we down they got like two three. Well, I, mean, I think people look look at what you're doing and they see the quality of the music. Right. You know, what I mean, some people is just hot for a certain time just because whatever type of gimmick they're doing makes them hot, exactly. or whatever whatever kind of crazy shit they do on social media right. might get them hot. Right. But I think when 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 you look at No Cap's catalog, it's like, okay, like this dude's really serious. Yeah, see, that's why I, I, I focus on that a lot. I ain't just trying to be that nigga that come in the game for two, three years. Like, you see Future and Thug, they still popping. Like, and they been in the game probably like seven to 10 plus. You get what I'm saying? So I, I want to be like that. Like, still have something going, not just come in and get out. Yeah, well, you know, you, you see people like Future, he records every day. Every day. I done been to the studio, like, and, like, he changed clothes down. He do everything at the studio. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah, man, when you see the most successful artists, that's usually what they do. Right. Like they, they live in that studio, and they push it out every single day. Right. And, you know, a lot of this shit never makes it out. Exactly. You know, it's like, I, you know, but if you do 100 songs, you have a lot higher chance of having right. a hit. And a lot of time, hundred. a lot of time, it's about who you know too. Like nigga can have the greatest music ever, but if you don't know nobody, what the hell you gonna do? Yeah, man. I mean, it's all a grind. You know, it's all the networking. Right. It's, it's the meeting people. It's having the right team around you. Because you know, like you know, before we started the interview, you actually came early, and like, I would say out of a hundred interviews, like maybe five people come early. Right. You know. Right. Uh, but, but you're on point. 
Exactly. Gotta gotta be about your business. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because you know, with us, it's like, yo, if you if you a certain amount late, we just say fuck it. We, right. You know, we got we got other shit to do today. We could reschedule or we won't. Exactly. You know, man. Listen, sounds like you got a good head on your shoulders. Right. Sounds like you have a good team. Right. Sounds like you, you understand the pitfalls exactly. and you're learning from the mistakes of people before you. Exactly. And uh seems like you got a bright future, man. Most definitely. You know, no cap, man. I appreciate you <laughs> coming in. Most definitely. You know? And uh, you know, can't wait to see what you got coming up. Most definitely appreciate you, bro. No doubt, man. Peace. Definitely. We got us a good one.